Take your Bibles this morning, turn to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 4. Isaiah 66, verse 4. And the title of the message this morning is The World's Delusions of Grandeur. And if there's, if there's anything that uh, is going on today, it's delusions. We've got a world that's no better off um, on the verge of war in Europe. We're on the verge of economic collapse in this country. If you don't know that, boy, you sure are not paying attention. This is possibly the trigger. Because I, I think to myself, spring coming, Pentecost will soon be here. <laughs> And maybe the Lord would see fit to call the church home. But it seems like that during, before that happens, or at least alongside of that, there has to be a reason for a white horse rider to show up just in the nick of time to save this earth from destroying itself. And that would be the Antichrist, if you don't know your Bible well enough. That white horse rider comes with a bow in his hand with no arrows, comes in peace. And when, when he shows up, being the, I mean, that's the theme of the white horse rider coming into town or coming in to save the day. Well, there's got to be a problem before, you know, somebody just rides in on a white horse and there's nothing going on. You don't think too much of him. But if the whole world's in turmoil, now I don't know if this is it. I, it seems like every few years we get right toward the edge and then we just kind of back up. And maybe Putin will get right toward the edge. Maybe he'll decide to back up. I don't know. Maybe he'll go forward and he'll take all of Ukraine. That'll be the end of the matter. Who knows? But I always keep in mind that any of those things can facilitate. And by the way, when war breaks out, everything takes, uh, absorbs the impact of it worldwide. So if you think things are going to change for you, if, if Russia invades Ukraine and it's not going to affect you, you're wrong. You're deluded. <laughs> and what would Isaiah 66, uh, look at verse 1. Let's start there. He says there, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. That's what God's looking for. Somebody that trembles at his word. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. Now this is, uh, we're in chapter 66, which lined up with the 66th book in the Bible, which is the book of Revelation, uh, tribulation period. Uh, and this is what they're going to end up offering on that altar over there in Jerusalem. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. There's going to be men slew on that altar. You'll find that over there in Revelation chapter 6 where they're slain on that altar. The Antichrist are sacrificing saints. He that sacrificed a, a lamb, which was the proper sacrifice, is he that cut off a dog's neck. Putting anything that's unclean on that altar. He that offered an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. And he that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Well, guess what? There's going to be an image in that holy place. And you find this in Isaiah 66. It says, Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions, and will bring uh, their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. Interesting, there's a lot of free choice going on in that verse. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, the Lord, uh, or said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. That's that word of prayer. Father, bless the message now. Lord, help me to uh, read it correctly and read it right and to preach it right. And Lord, look at the delusions that this world has, uh, that has and been putting forth and most everybody buys into, Lord. And Father, I pray that we just believe the book. That's the only way we're not going to get deluded. That's the only way we're not going to get fooled is if we believe every word in this book. 
And thank you, Father, for it. Thank you for those here today. May you bless our time together in our fellowship for Jesus' sake. Amen. The Lord says there, He says, I also, I also. In other words, there's already delusions. He said, I also will choose their delusions. They've already chosen some. This thing about God deceiving people without them already being deceived, that's heresy. These are people that have already been deceived. God just gives them more rope, more lie to hang themselves with. Because once you've rejected the truth, there's nothing left but a lie, right? And he says, I'll feed you that lie. Your Bible tells you that. But the world chooses its own ways, its own delusions, before God ever introduces His. God just allows the thing to go to the extreme. He just keeps taking it down. I mean, if they, want to, if, they want, if they want to reject Christ, He'll give them the Antichrist. If that's who they want. If you don't want heaven, God will give you hell. You know what? God will probably give you whatever you want. What do you want? He'll give it to you. You want the world? You can have it. But there's some delusions about God. There's some delusions about a lot of things, but the delusions about God, Psalm 14, 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's a delusion. It says, they are corrupt, they have done abominable works, there's none that doeth good. I don't know how anybody could be an atheist. I just don't. I've had conversations with God even as a child. I remember those conversations. I always knew He was there. And I think they do too, till somebody tries to talk them out of it or they get educated out of it. You know He's there. Don't you know that you're eternal? I have known that since I was a child. That somehow I would always exist. I knew I would. Somewhere. I just didn't know I was a sinner on my way to an eternal hell, and that's where I was going to exist. But, I, you know, you've got to have four, six years of college before you disbelieve what God says. But you know it in your own heart. It bears witness to it. I don't know if you all felt that way or not, but I always felt that way. Psalms chapter 2, verse 1 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Evolution's a vain thing. Man, it, you know... You have, to, you have to reject, you, need, you not only have to reject science, because there's a lot of science that does not agree with evolution. You have, to reject, you have to reject the witness of the creation all around you to accept evolution. Then you have crazy. Anybody in the right mind knows this complexity didn't happen by accident. This is design. There are laws that govern our universe. There must be a lawgiver. They're delusional. And, and those that have chosen evolution, which is really self-worship, um, man is the highest form, you know. Um, man is the, uh, what's the word? Uh, he's the um, pattern or, or the standard of all things. I can't remember exactly how it's worded. Um, huh? Measure, that's it. Man is the measure of all things. Well, no, he's not. He's not the measure of anything. I mean, like you say, you can barely get off this planet, and you only go a couple, you know, a couple million miles away, and that's it. And it, and it takes him a long time to do that. He's not really amounted to much in this universe, if you think about it. We're just like a speck of sand out here. In fact, Job so Job says to God, "What is man that even mindful of him? That you set your heart upon him? Why? Why waste your time?" With this ant farm down here. You know, when you can just take the thing and shake it. You have never done that. You didn't do that to your ant farm, did you? Shake it. I used to have one until somebody shook it. I don't know who did. But, um, think about the rest of the world, that delusional to, have a, to worship a, a piece of wood or a rock. Or some carving, some, some idol. A dumb idol that has no... They can't talk, they can't speak, can't instruct you, and you got to pick it up and carry it wherever you go. Man, is that not a delusion? I got no time for God. If I got to carry my God around, man, I, I got no time for that. If I got to, you know, put him in my backpack, you know, just to get somewhere, take him out and talk to him, and then he doesn't talk back. Well, who's doing the talking back then? Talk about delusional. 
you're, you got a problem. Look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 10. I'm going to do my best not to be long here. I keep saying that. Jeremiah chapter 10, starting in verse 2, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of the, of the heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver, with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. These things have faces to them. They must needs be born, because they cannot, be, uh, they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. It's a piece of wood. You see, what are they? Well, you know, back in the day they were Christmas trees. But this is not a Christmas tree. It's a totem pole is what it is, where you carve the faces in it. And he says, don't, don't be afraid of them. Why? It's wood. I mean, unless it falls on you. I mean, they're supposed to fasten it good. But unless it falls on you, it really can't hurt you. And it can't do anything for you either. That's, that's what people worship. I mean, a good portion of the world worships a bunch of idols. I think I got ahead of myself there. Oh. Um, another thing that's they're delusional about God. That God is only love and that he loves everyone and hates no one. That's the Joe Olstein version of God. God just loves everybody, you know. But God's a balanced being. Do you, do you love everything? Is there things you hate? Well, so can God. The Bible says he, can hate every, he hates every evil work. Psalms 5.5 5 says he hateth all workers of iniquity. Go look it up. He said, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. God can hate. He can hate cities. He can hate peoples. He's a balanced being. Now, does he prefer to hate? Well, do you prefer to hate people or love people? I mean, I prefer to love them. And, and we're told to do everything we can. God's done everything. Listen, through Jesus Christ, God's done everything he can. But God committed his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What more do you want from the man? What more do you want from God? He gave his only begotten son to die in your thing. The delusion is that God can't hate anybody. Oh, yes, he can. He can hate sin and he can hate the sinner. And the, the, the thing they don't understand is, and I've said this over and over again, the, the love of God is in Christ Jesus. That's where God's love is. Don't have him, don't have the love of God. That's why it says, the wrath of God abideth on you. Just waiting to fall. So those are some delusions about God. Then there's delusions about the devil. The delusions about the devil is he's not a real being, just people bent on doing evil. You ever notice that? The devil always wants to stay in the shadows. Uh, he'll eventually come out. Look into Job chapter 1. I can remember when I was back there teaching Job chapter 1, two and a half years ago. Job chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, so the Lord's having a delusion here. He's talking to somebody that's not even there. Do you believe that? He says, "Whence comest thou? Oh, now the delusion answers him. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. So these folks that don't believe that he's real, well, God says he's real, had a conversation with him. Calls him up and tells him to come forward every now and then. The only person experiencing the delusion is the people that don't believe he's real. They think it's some kind of force or just uh, some spirit, and it is a spirit, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's why we see the world really heading the same way. Nothing seems to slow it down or stop it, or maybe it'll pause it for just a little bit, and then they go helter-skelter right toward the edge. I've seen this because I, I, I've questioned it for 40-some years. Why, why does it keep going this direction when they know better? And yet, here we go. 
I mean, who doesn't understand socialism? Who doesn't understand it? And yet we're headed that way. How can that be? <laughs> we already know it's, it fails. It's failed everywhere it's been. Yet here we go. We're headed toward this one world, one world, one world. And when, when people, even if they don't want it, we head that way. You know what that is? That's God adding on to the delusion. The purpose of the devil is to elevate himself so that he's worshipped like God and it will be no delusion. He will be here. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 2 Thessalonians 2.4 Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. And it sure is not up, it's not that temple that's up there. If you think he can meander his way into that temple without uh, God the Father kicking him uh, three light years away, it's the one down here. So who shows up? Somebody physical. You're going to show up as a man. He's going to sit in that temple and claim to be God Almighty. And it's not going to be a delusion, it's going to be real. So the, the delusions about the devil, he's not a real being, just people bent on doing evil. It's false. He's a real being. The Bible says, like a roaring lion, he, he goeth about seeking whom he may devour. He is your personal enemy. He is the accuser of the brethren. And he will take you out. If you give him a, any opportunity, he will take you out. The only guard you have against him is the same guard that Jesus Christ had against him. That was the Scriptures. And you best know the scriptures and know how he know how he comes to get you. I mean, some of you just ought to make sense, man. You know what your weakest link is, don't you? Well, what did they'll come after you? Your weakest link. He knows, he knows what angers you, he knows what excites you, he knows what'll knock you right out of the race. I don't know why Christians aren't ready. I, I, you know, it, it's like you have to be ready all the time. I've had everything be normal, and then in a split second, or it seems that way, in no time at all, everything's just out of sorts. And everything's just kind of blowed up. And I've just watched them just leave, depart, <laughs> go away. Man, you can't do that every time it happens, because it's going to happen all the time. There's not enough churches in the area for you to visit if, you're th if you'll leave every time there's a blow-up, every time something happens. You'll know, you'll know when, 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 this, when this church is done. You'll know. God will show you. He'll tell you. He'll make it clear. The fat lady will sing. Then head out the door. But I've been waiting for the fat lady to sing for, I don't know, 15 years. And uh, she's warmed up her voice a few times, hummed a few bars. But she never got to, to the main act before God just brought it back. So I just trust Him with it and kind of go with it. And when things happen, I used to get upset, cry myself to sleep a little bit. It worried me. I lose nights of sleep. I don't lose no sleep now. God either has it or He doesn't. And if I'm doing the right thing and, I, and, and, and I'm being accountable for what I'm supposed to do and you're being accountable for what you're supposed to do, it'll all work out the way God wants it to. He's going to bless it. That's the way you've got to look at it. And there's always glory if it doesn't work out. <laughs> Amen? It's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If he delivers us, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow. That's the way you've got to be. There's delusions about God. There's delusions about the devil. There's delusions about sin. I'll tell you, the delusion about sin is not that serious. Why? Because everybody does it. But it is serious. I don't know if you know it or not, it's killing you. No matter what you do, no matter how well you try to take care of this body, sin will kill you eventually. For the wages of sin is death. You say, well, it's disease and it's, it's my diet. Well, that may usher it in quicker, <laughs> you know. There may be things that you uh, involve yourself that are just dangerous, you know. 
I see these guys, I'll tell you what, I'll start sweating watching these guys climbing the face, uh, the face of a cliff or a mountain or whatever, and they're up there just hanging on by their fingernails, and they're nothing, I mean, they got no ropes or nothing. They're climbing these, these walls and just gripping with their hands, and I'm like, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I cannot see any, anything in the ministry that, why you would want to do that. Why any service to God would involve climbing the face of a cliff and just hanging on by your fingernails. And I'm thinking, I watched about this one famous guy. I was watching this documentary and he was famous uh, in climbing. And they were going to go up the north face of Everest. And they were just doing their preliminaries, you know, making their way up to the different camps, you know. You got to do it in stages. And he just went up to look at this one area and the next thing you know, an avalanche came down and buried him. Him and one other guy. I think his cameraman. I mean, they dug him up 16 years later, you know. <laughs> you see part of him sticking up, you know. And they dug him up and they had a service and then they burned him, you know. They, I mean, you stop. They, a lot of times when they die on Everest, they just leave him there. I mean, these Sherpas, I mean, sometimes they'll, carry, they'll try to carry them back. Those people are incredible, man. I mean, they don't even need the oxygen necessarily. But, you know, there, people die on, uh, on the way up to Everest or on the way back. They just leave them where they lay. They can lay there for 10, 20 years until somebody drags them back. But I don't see any purpose in that. That, to me, doesn't make any sense. But people aren't serious about sin, even though they say because everybody does it. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah, but it's killing you. <laughs> you know, if you, if you obey mom and dad and you live, uh, uh, live an obedient life up until the time that you're 18 and get out on your own or however, however long a time you stay at home, you know that you'll probably, be, you'll probably live just by following their rules. Just by following what they tell you. Now, if you're a rebellious son and you start going out, you know, and uh, getting into this and getting into that and cigarettes and dope and uh, premarital sex and all that kind of thing, uh, you might wind up dead. You'll probably you'll wind up in a car accident, you know, or you just slammed into a wall. I mean, that Bible tells you sin's serious. Sin is serious. Ezekiel 18.4 by the, by the way, the reason I mention that is that is the commandment with promise. Why? It's not that God says, now I'm going to put a special thing on you so you'll never die. That's not saying that. What it's saying is that the commandment with promise is that if you, if, you, if you live according to your parents' rules and they're living according to this, man, you're going to be the safest you can be without endangering yourself. I mean, you know. Churches are about the safest place. I'm not saying something can't go wrong, but, you know, we're ready for that. Uh, Ezekiel 18.4, he said, Behold, all souls are mine, this, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And then the Bible tells us that there's a second death. In Revelation 21.8, But the fearful, unbelieving, Abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Sin is a serious thing. And if it's not taken care of, it'll put you into the lake of fire. Actually, your rejection of Jesus Christ, that sin, will put you into a lake of fire forever. The delusion about it is that since everybody does it, God's just going to have to overlook it, you know, or he's going to have to grade on the bell curve or something. You know, when everybody in the class fails the test, they, they expect the teacher to grade on a bell, you know. Oh, well, yeah, you, you, weren't, uh, you, weren't a, uh, you weren't a pedophile or sodomite, so you made it, you know. <laughs> he said, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. That means you go to the same place that the pedophiles and the murderers and the rapists go. Same place the Muslims go. Whoever else rejects Christ wind up in the same place as them. Now, maybe not in the deepest part of it, but you're going to wind up there. And he says that's the second death. Sin is serious. Delusions about sin is, well, you know, if I go to hell, then I'll, just go, I'll get to play cards and pool with my buddies. I don't know why you'd think there would be cards or even a pool table. 
in hell. And if you could play one while you're set on fire, all the power to you. But I don't think so. I think there'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I think the smoke, smoke of their torment ariseth up forever and ever. Sin is a serious thing, but the world's deluded about it. They also have delusions about heaven and hell. They'll say heaven is real and eternal, and hell is a myth and temporal. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So they want hell oh, or, or heaven. Oh, I'm going, heaven lasts forever, but hell, that's, you know, I mean, like the Jehovah Witnesses or the, uh, the uh, Seventh-day Adventists, hell's the grave. It's temporary. That's one of the greatest lies of a heretic. The JWs, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Mormons, and Billy Graham all taught that. Now, it took Billy Graham a while before he defected from the faith, but he got there. And see, that's the, that's the fear of this age. It's, it says in the last days, some shall depart from the faith. Oh, they have. And the more famous they are, and the more exposure they get, and the more how big the evangelistic enterprise becomes, is the more they have to compromise with the world. To where they're no longer even believing that hell's an eternal lake of fire. It's separation from God. It's more than that. Actually, it's not even that. He says, though I dig into hell, behold, thou art there. Why do you think God wouldn't be in the lake of fire too? His spirit is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Always will be. God's fully aware of where He's sending them. He's there too. But He's not there suffering. He's there witnessing it. And He's still just. He'll still put you in hell. Uh, in Mark chapter 3, verse 29, uh, but, he shall, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. Now, Christian, you can't do that in this age. It's not even possible. Jesus Christ is not here. And it was, the blasphemy was to say that he cast out devils by the prince of devils, that the work that he did to save the Holy Spirit within him was a, a devil or evil. He's not here doing that, so you can't do it. You know. Some people run with it. The charismatics and stuff run with that. It... it they can't read their own Bible. Uh, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. Here's the point. But is in danger of what? Eternal damnation. Now I can show you other verses where, you know, where it talks about eternal damnation, eternal hell, and um, eternal fire. I mean, I can show you all kinds of verses. Now, if eternal damnation does not mean forever, then why do you think eternal life would mean forever? Huh? Eternal life is forever and so is eternal damnation. And the world has a delusion about it. The heretics of the cults have a delusion about it. Uh, there's delusions about the Bible. It's just a book. That's what they say. It's just a book. Well, it's the most incredible book I've ever ha had in my hands. It's a book that I cannot seem to master and I've read it more times than I've read anything in my life. I read it every day. I cannot master this book. I can't even begin to master it. How is that? You'd think, man, if, if there had been any other book, I'd have memorized it by now. I'd know every, every part and parcel of a book. I mean, if you read it 150 times, or you read it 200 times, or you read one passage three, four, five hundred times in a lifetime, you'd think you'd know it by heart, and you'd be able to tell everything about that story, but not this one. This thing goes, it just explodes. It just explodes into so many different avenues and so many different things and so many different, so much wisdom and so much knowledge and so much prophecy and it just, it, it blows your mind. But they say it's just a book. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God which effectually worketh also in you believe. So that's the difference between this church and many churches in the area. We believe this is the Word of God, and they believe it's the Word of men. Or they would never correct it, would they? You must believe it's the Word of men if you'll correct it. If you believe it's the Word of God, would you correct it? No. They think they have the Word of men. They're still searching around for the Word of God. It's somewhere around here. We'll dig it up someplace. We'll find it somewhere. And I think after, I think we just need a couple more translations. I mean, there's only 250 or 300. 50 more. And we'll have it whittled down to the perfect, inerrant, infallible Word of God. <laughs> no. 
You know, from Sunday school, we're talking about a whole different set of manuscripts. They say it's written by men, just like any other religious writing. But yet the Bible itself claims that, well, it says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Hmm. It may be written by men, but they're, but they're, but they're inspired of God to say that what they said. In, uh, they say it's filled with errors and contradictions. No absolute truth. That's what they want to try to say. That's the only way you can sell Bibles. I mean, I know people that, I mean, every time a new Bible come out, they go and buy it. Because they think it's going to be better than the one they've got. So they just keep buying Bible after Bible. And, you know, you're a chump. You're the sucker. And they're deceiving you. And they're getting money out of your pocket. And they're producing one. And they were producing one about every six months. And they still may be. I don't know. And you can just keep buying them and buying them and buying them and buying them. Because the one you've got must be filled with errors and contradictions or they wouldn't have gone to another one. Proverbs 30 verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to them that put their trust in Him. Now I want you to go back. Turn back to Isaiah 66. And I want to read this. Uh, I didn't read it very well the first time. Hopefully I'll read it better the second time. Excuse me. Verse 5. It says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified. See, just because, just because they're in church and just because their hands are raised, both of them, and it said, Let the Lord be glorified. But they hate you for something. What would they hate you for? Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. What about? Well, it says, hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. <laughs> you know who will hate you? There are people out there that will hate you. I'm talking about Christians, or at least they claim to be, hate you for believing that book. By the way, you're in a cult. You just didn't know it. If you're sitting here this morning, if you believe the King James Bible is the Word of God without error, you're in a cult. I can prove it. It's on the internet. The King James only crowd. We're a cult. You say, why are you and we in a cult? Because you believe every word of that book. And you're following the cult, you're following the, the cult master, Peter S. Ruckman. Why? Because he believes every word in that book. Well, how can I be following him if I believe every word in that book? I think I'm following him who's following the book, right? Didn't Paul say, be followers of me as I also am of Christ? Huh. Funny how that works. It's okay to follow somebody who's following the Lord, right? But who are they following? They're following somebody. The people that are calling you a cult and, call, and say that you know, they can't stand your presence, somebody's following them. They're following some man who doesn't believe in following that book. I'll stay right where I'm at. We may never grow over 30. We may never grow over 40. We might drop down to 20. Who knows? Been there before. <laughs> you see, we won't change what we believe. And we're still going to be hated. We're still... Listen, I didn't think that anybody would pay us attention. I was wrong. We got paid attention to quite a few times. We lost a church building because of that. Why? They were King James only. Better be careful with them. They're like a cult. They believe every word in the Bible. Can you believe that? Let's string them up and beat them. They believe every word of God. Can you believe that? The gall of these people to believe the Bible. <laughs> If it wasn't so tragic, it would, it, it's hilarious, but it's tragic. They do believe. I'm serious. That's what they believe. Don't believe me? Look it up. That's why Peter S. Ruckman is maligned about every other page of the Internet. Why? They hate him for believing a book and for catching them in the lie. Lies about that book. That's what they don't like. 
They will be ashamed. That's what it says. They will be ashamed. God's not going to side with them. He's going to side with you. Why? You believed Him. There's delusions about salvation. Um, believing in God or believing in God is sufficient to save you. I'm sorry, believing in God is sufficient to save you. Just believing in God, I should say. Well, it wasn't sufficient for the devil and his angels. They believe in God. You can't find a devil in the New Testament that doesn't believe in God. They say, we know who thou art, the Holy One of God. He says, keep your, keep, shut your mouth, keep your peace. Don't tell anybody. Well, they don't deserve to know. <laughs> they knew who he was. So the devil and his angels, they're going to wind up in hell, but they believe in God. James 2.19 says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe in trouble. I don't know if you know it or not, but the devil believes in God. But if you just believe, I mean, it's a delusion. If you just believe in God, I guess it don't matter what name. I tell you, when you believe in God... you. It's like saying you believe in that chair, but you won't sit in it. I believe in that chair. That chair is right there. But when you believe in that chair, on that chair, however you want to put it, is when you sit down on it and trust that chair to hold you up. Just because you recognize the chair is there is irrelevant. A lot of people know about Jesus Christ. They have not believed on Him or in Him. They have not trusted Him. Romans 3.12 says... All right, this is the next one. Um, he or she was a good person, therefore they must have been saved. I hear this all the time. Bless your heart. You try to justify somebody that's died in the, uh, you know, before you got a chance to witness to them, or you never took the chance to witness to them, and because you know they said, you know, pray for me, you know, or something, they're saved. Well, I've never ascribed that, and I've always, I've always, I've always tried to be honest with the Lord, you know. If I didn't know they were saved, if they didn't have a testimony of salvation. Now, maybe they were, maybe they weren't. I don't know. But this thing about, you know, well, they're a good person, therefore they must be saved. Where's that in the Scriptures? It says, my Bible says uh, in Romans 3.12, they're all gone out of the way, they're together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. Compared to Jesus Christ, man, they're in trouble. And quit taking people at their word just because they, they seem to be even religious. At least check them out. Ask them a few questions. Probe a little bit. Instead, we just, we just kind of fold, you know. Well, they, they mentioned something about the Lord. They must be saved. <laughs> and the, the other delusion is accept Jesus in your heart and you'll be saved. You know, how we put it matters. Jesus said, I tell you, Luke 13, 3 and 5, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Are you, you make sure you're including repentance in there? Before you just receive Jesus into your heart? Because that's the easy way of doing it. What you have to convince someone is that they'll go to hell unless they receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. There's the repentance. There's the change of mind. I'm not good enough to get there. Not just having a religious experience of, you know, receiving Jesus in your heart. Sounds good, but it really doesn't get to the heart of the message. And you're doing them a disservice because, I'll tell you what, you're going to have a lot of false fruit if that's how you're doing it. I'd rather have no fruit and preach the truth and have a bunch of false fruit because I had to water it down because I wanted it to be acceptable. There's no way of watering this thing down, man. It's negative. Negative, 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 positive. Four, three parts of it negative, one part positive. That's the gospel. That's what it, that's what it says in, in 1 Corinthians 15, 4. How that Christ died, negative, for our sins, negative, and was buried, negative, and rose the third day, positive. Three negatives to one positive. So why do you think the message is not going to be bitter herbs like it was talking about that Passover lamb back there in the book of Exodus chapter 12? It's bitter herbs. It's bitter to swallow. And it's going to be. 
But man, for the love of peace, give them the right, give them the right message. Don't sit there and just coat over it and candy coat it and send them to hell. Let them go to hell on their own. You don't need to help them. They reject it then, fine. And you can say it just as nice as you want. Just tell them. <laughs> Except you repent. <laughs> you shall all likewise bear. You can say it with a smile on your face. It'll still be negative. <laughs> all right. God will add to their self-delusions with some delusions of his own. Just when man thinks he's done, you know, I mean, he's deluded himself. God says, no, 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 <laughs> we're not done. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10 and 11 says, For this cause, why, they've already deluded themselves. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Yes, God will send them strong delusion that they will, they've already rejected the truth. Now he's going to get them to believe the biggest lie coming down the pike. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. See, they, they didn't believe the truth. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You say, what's that going to boil down to? Man, he's going to feed them the lie of all lies. Mr. Lie himself. The liar and the murderer from the very beginning, the Bible says. In Revelation 13, 1 to 5, it stood upon the stand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. So he's um, integrated like a leopard is. He's got the feet of a bear, he'll move like Russia. And his mouth is out of the mouth of a lion. He'll have an Engl English language like, like uh, England. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of the heads that were wounded to death. His deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Strong delusion. And they worshipped the dragon. The ultimate end of this delusion is you end up worshipping the devil. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? And who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. You haven't seen delusion yet till God gets done with this thing. And by the time he gets done, he'll have the whole world, except for a multitude that gets saved, but he'll have the whole world following the beast who's following the dragon. They're literally going to be worshiping the devil. So the world is so delusional, they end up worshiping the devil. Delusions of grandeur. You've heard that expression, delusions of grandeur, that mean, thinking you're going to amount to something. <laughs> delusions of grandeur is a symptom of being psychotic. This world is crazy. And I'm, I'm sitting there just standing back watching them going, what in the world are we doing? Where, does they, where do they think we're going? What do they think is going to come out of this? I mean, you watch the policies, you watch everything changing, and it's like, oh, come, no good will come of that. Why? Because they got this. This is telling me. We're, they're deluded. They're delusional. Oh, maybe you've got to be alive a while to realize that. That the world is an insane asylum run by the inmates. Every man that rejects Jesus Christ as Savior deludes himself. God just comes along and damns him good and proper by deluding him further into madness. We call that a vessel of wrath. In other words, you can be whatever vessel you want. You can be a vessel of mercy or you can be a vessel of wrath. But once you get on the wheel of a vessel of wrath, you have no idea how God's going to mold that thing. You know, I used to, in, in high school, we, we, I, I took, uh, I had this art class. Last place I should have been, I'm terrible at art. I can't even draw stick figures, okay? And we're making stuff, you know, and of course I made an ashtray. That's the only thing I knew how to make was an ashtray. And um, if you don't, prepare that clay just right. If you don't beat all the air bubbles out, it'll explode when they fire it. You know, if God doesn't prepare that thing right, it'll self-destruct. But He gets you on that wheel, man. You've rejected the truth. You have a big old air pocket. And one day, poof, it's just going to blow apart. I can't tell you. I don't know how I passed that class. I had so many things explode in that kiln. 
everything I made just about exploded. Because I didn't what? I didn't, I didn't prepare the vessel right. But if you're a vessel of mercy, God will get you home. That's his promise. All right, let's all stand. Don't follow the world's delusions. Follow the scriptures. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to have... Um, we're going to have...